Princess. I'm not okay. It's not like there's anything you can do to make me feel better. Walt's expression slips. His chest heaves with a silent sigh. All I can do right now is try. Waltz's voice is a soft whisper, but I could still pick up his voice or words. All he can do right now? What is he talking about? Waltz's gaze moves to the set of teddy bears displayed on one of the shelves. He is quiet and for a few moments uh, he is quiet for a few moments before he speaks up. He's affected by the curse. What? The king. He can't remember you because of the curse. That doesn't mean he never cared about you. That's the reason you looked so down, right? I was looking outside. I saw the way you looked at him. Doesn't he know that it's rude to stare? Oh, and how did I look? Hurt. I turn away before Waltz can see the frustration on my face. He loves you, you know. More than you'll ever know. And how would you know that? You don't know him at all. Everyone has their own way of expressing their love. I'm sure he has his own ways. By not being there when I needed him, he has never acted like a father to me. Princess. Don't pretend to know what my life at the palace was like, Waltz. This conversation is over. Let's return to the Martian. Hmm. Look what I drew! Lucette, you do you know you're not meant to be in here. But I drew this picture of us. See? This is mother and me. And you're holding mom's hand. Go play somewhere else, Lucette. I'm busy. But you're always busy, father. I just want to Go to your mother, I'm sure she's looking for you. Okay. Poor Lucette. I'm vaguely aware of the moonlight in my room as I sit up in my bed, heart beating painfully fast. What was I dreaming about? It felt like I was dreaming about the king. But why now? A few days have already passed since I saw him. I fall back onto bed. I close my eyes and once again attempt to sleep, but it hovers stubbornly out of my reach. What was that? Who could be making that noise at this time of night? I step out of my bed and head outside to investigate. There's no one here. The sound, it's coming from the tavern. Detective Lucette is on the case. I slowly turn the knob and open the door. Hello? <laughs> uh, <ooh. laughs> Uh, the broom begins to hop towards me. Oh! I begin to back away. It's the middle of the night. There's no way I'm going to sleep now. But the broom just hops past to cower behind me. That's some broom you got there. Waltz, what are you doing here? I couldn't sleep, so I decided to work on some of my puppets. But I accidentally stepped on the broom and it went berserk. I turn around and grab Mr. Broom, leaning it against its designated spot on the wall. But why are you here? I heard a sound. As curious as always, that's going to get you in trouble, you know. I don't need to be lectured by you. I uh, apologize for waking you up. You should go back to sleep. I would not be here if I could sleep. I might as well stay for a while. If that's what you want. Walt turns back to his puppets on the table. He leans down over the puppets, checking their seams. Since you're here, I think you can help me. Help you? Oh, it's so derpy. What the fuck? What do you think of my newest puppet? I look at Waltz with surprise, his eyes so wide and his lower lip jutting out. He looks like a puppy begging for a treat. Is he expecting a compliment on the puppet? Well... I look closely at the puppet's eyes. 
It looks evil. Uh, excuse me. It looks evil. It does not look evil. The cutest chameleon lizard ever. Really? I'm glad to hear that. It's gonna be the villain in my next show. Villain! Oh, poor lizard. Thank you for your help, princess. I'm glad that my mentor approves. Mentor? Waltz well, doesn't answer. That's it. Indeed. I only offered an opinion, but he looks so happy. What a weird person. Waltz resumes his sewing in silence. He's very talented to be able to sew such a complicated animal. He has probably been doing this for a long time to be so skilled. Possibly even longer than I expect, considering the nature of his curse. You look like you've got something on your mind, princess. Well, you have never actually told me how to break your curse. Ah, I guess I haven't. Waltz clears his throat as he goes back to his sewing. <clears throat> I need to find Tinkerbell and Neverland. Oh, right. You don't know the story. Mother burned all the fairy tale books in the palace before I could read most of them. And nobody would tell me any of the stories. Mother always forbid me from talking about them. Peter Pan is the story of a boy who never grows up. He's accustomed to He's accompanied by a fairy friend named Tinkerbell, and the two of them live together in Neverland. In my case, Tinkerbell is a key that can open Neverland. Neverland is a box, a, fam a family heirloom. My shadow is being kept in Neverland. That shadow is my magic. Once I get it back, my curse will break. Oh, my throat. Magic? I'm a witch, princess. This shouldn't come as a shock, Lucette. He says it no he says it so nonchalantly, like stating what his job is. He and Delore are the same. I've seen Waltz conjure flowers from thin air before, but I never associated associated that with that type of magic that witches do. Then What do you think that was? Conjuring Flowers in thin air. I mean, I guess it could be like a re a just just a magic trick and not considered magic. Ah, uh, Lucetta is like a brick. <laughs> she has the brain of a she has a br a brick as a brain, and then she's like slowly learns. You're a witch, a cursed witch. How is that even possible? Oh, that... Yeah, I guess that could be. Uh, yeah, I guess I could understand her confusion then. If uh, this is the first time she's encountered a witch being cursed. Only the TB bear has the ability to curse another witch. It's why I can only do simple magic nowadays. If I ever want to cast proper spells again, I'm going to need to find Tinkerbell and Neverland. You don't know where Tinkerbell and Neverland are? No. Of course I fucking don't. If I did, why why would I still be a child? No, I don't. Does that mean you're stuck in this form forever? Yes! How about a story? <laughs> I feel annoyance begin to simmer inside me. Why do you do that? You change the subject to purposely avoid answering me. No, that's not it, princess. I'm trying to explain, and I think a story is the best way for me to do that, because you're annoying the shit out of me. <laughs> I am silent as Waltz reaches into his pop box of puppets. He pulls out two of them, then motions for me to sit in front of him. He holds out a puppet to me, and I can tell he intends for me to wear it on my hand. I feel my feelings on the subject must show on my face, but Waltz is resolute. Please. I don't know why or what this will achieve, but maybe this way I'll finally get some answers. We've got the most answers from Waltz, I think. Oh, in this in this like close up, he actually looks like a child. Waltz keeps, takes a deep breath. 
Once upon a time, there lived a princess who was always alone. She spent most of her time inside her room as her mother, the queen, forbade her from going out. The princess's only company were her dolls. The pr but the princess wanted friends so badly that she would always sneak out of the palace to play with the children who lived in town. It's as if he's narrating my childhood. How do you... But Waltz continues to speak as if he does not hear me. One day, the princess met a boy. The boy was a few years older than her, and he was a queen's faithful servant. The boy could see how lonely the princess was, and his heart ached for her. They became friends. Every day, he would sneak into her room and they would and play with her. They spent two years like that until the queen found out. The boy was sent away, and he never saw the princess again. Until a short while ago. I stumble back, and this puppet slides off my hand as I stare at Waltz, my mind whirling. We've known each other for a long time, princess. This can't be true. Waltz looks at me again, his expression full of melancholy. I always see that look. He wears it even when he's happy. He seems to carry that sadness with him wherever he goes. We were friends. I never had any friends. I would have remembered. That's what you remember. Your memories have holes in them. Gaps that you can't explain. How do you know that? Because I was there when... When the queen ordered that some of your memories be erased. Mother? But why? I don't believe you, and I don't believe any of this. I didn't expect you to believe me. Why is he looking at me like that? He looks like he's in pain. What? He can't be telling the truth. I stand up straight, my hands clenched in fists. I'm going back to my room. I almost run from the tavern area. Waltz does not try to stop follow me. Waltz's words loop persistently in my mind. We were friends. I sit on one of the chairs in the reception area trying to put my thoughts in order. There's no way he's my friend. Oh, what's this? <laughs> What a delight to run into the princess at this hour. Though I must ask, why are you still awake, darling? I jump at the sound of Karma's voice. I turn to look at him. Karma frowns at the expression on my face. You look like you've seen a ghost. I can only stare at him in response. Oh my, isn't my beauty so captivating you find yourself at a loss for words, Sparkle? No, I was just thinking. About how beautiful I am, Sparklewink. His ego knows no bounds. I roll my eyes and change the subject. What are you doing up this late? Hmm? A nighttime stroll? I found myself filled with ennui. Right. I will go and retire for the night now. Have a good sleep. It will be another long day tomorrow. You don't have to remind me. You still have a ways to go before you get used to commoners' lifestyle. I certainly struggled with it. Karma barely works. I only ever see him slack off. But wait, are you a noble karma? Perhaps. Perhaps. Perhaps, Sparkle Wink. This is going nowhere. This tavern is full of secretive people. I wonder if this lifestyle has anything to do with this curse. Well, I'm not planning to get used to the commoner's lifestyle. I will break my curse as soon as possible. Seems like we both have a long way before that happens, princess. Damn! I don't want to play with you anymore. But why? We're friends, aren't we not? Friends? Who said that? You did. We were friends until you stopped sharing your toys. But, but that, that is because you still haven't. 
What? You still haven't returned the toys I gave you. Return them? He gave them to us. No, it didn't. Let's go play with our real friends. Yeah, our real friends aren't selfish. Children are dicks. I warned you, dearest one. Didn't I tell you? People will only hurt you in the end. That is why I forbade you from playing with those children. I will only... I only ever want what's best for you. I'm sorry, mother. I'm so sorry. Hush now, dearest one. Mother won't let anyone hurt you anymore. Mother will now dis disintegrate those children once and for all. I wouldn't be surprised if she actually did that. Three weeks have passed since my encounter with the king. I am once again in town with Waltz as he prepares for one of his shows. Let's do more of this. I've already lost count of how many times of how many of his shows I've watched at this point. The excursions have become part of my daily routine. Waltz has been insistent on training me as his assistant, so I have decided to play along. I fall in love too 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 Okay. Sorry about that slight pause. Even now, I am helping him construct his booth, though he refuses to let me carry anything too heavy. I've experienced so many new things these past few months. Things have, things I've always wanted to experience, but had never been told anyone about. Somehow, Waltz knew about all of them. Even when he told me that we were childhood friends and insisted that my memories of him had been erased, I hadn't believed him. But now... I'm beginning to believe that he's telling the truth about this forgotten friendship. Walt smiles at me from where he is assembling the front of this booth. You used to dream about getting out of the palace to see Angel. And now you're here. You can't imagine how I'm happy I am that I can finally fulfill all the promises I made to you. I still have reservations of believing your story, but... Waltz, even if you did know me a long time ago, I'm not the same. I hand him the small curtains for the booth. My head dipped so that I do not have to look him in the eyes. I'm not the child you used to know. I know that. But I also believe that the girl that I knew all those years ago, the one who was always so happy over the smallest things, that kind, sincere girl, She's still you. How can that be when I don't think I ever truly know what happiness feels like? After Waltz hangs the curtains, the booth is complete. I expect him to step out from the side as he always does, but he sets his palms down on the table instead and looks at me. When I saw you again that day, I was so happy. I thought fate had brought you back to me. Waltz's voice is very soft when he speaks. But when you still didn't recognize me, Waltz's voice trails off, and I frown. There's still so many things he's not telling me. Waltz ex Eventually, Waltz picks up his box of puppets and smiles at me brightly. Anyway, I've got a show to perform. Don't go anywhere. I notice that his smile does not reach his eyes as I watch him walk away. I look at the crowd that has gathered for the show. There are a lot of families here today. I watch as two families approach each other. The adults begin to converse with each other while the kids run up to the front of the crowd to catch a better glimpse of the show. Some of the children have shoes, but the parents are barefoot. All their clothes are dirty and torn. Their lives are clearly hard, but they are still smiling. I have never been in desperate need of clothes or food. I've never had to work for anything. I should have been happier than these people when I was a princess. But now, I'm beginning to see that the material things I had were never enough to buy me true happiness. Hello everyone. I take a step back to this 
uh, take a step off to the side as Waltz begins to show. Waltz weaves his stories as seamlessly as he always does, captivating his audience with every word, but I'm not paying attention. My focus is locked on the two families standing near me. When I see these people, I cannot help but wonder, what kind of life have I been leading? Waltz's show was a success. Bleh. Waltz's show was a success yet again. He is smiling from ear to ear as he counts the coins he has earned as a reward for his good performance. You look happier than usual. I am. I've been saving money for a special toy, and now I can finally buy it. He says he does not like to be treated like a child, but he gets so excited when he, whenever he mentions a new toy. I pause at the sound of laughter and look up to see a group of children talking excitedly to each other as they approach Walt and I. Ah, this might be an opportunity. An opportunity? Making these children happy might be a good deal. What? Walt ignores me as he jogs up to the children. Walt! <laughs> That's not a child's voice. The group of children swarm him, talking loudly as he, they each try to cling to him in some manner. I've been waiting forever for you to come back. But I was just here a couple of days ago. But you didn't have the time to play. Can we play now? Please, please, please. We've been good, just like you told us. The boy looks around at the group of children and they all nod their heads in eager agreement. Well, if you've been good as you say, how could I say no? The children cheer. Yay! I'm going to start camping now. Come on! He won't find us this time. The children disperse around the area. I go. I watch them go with disinterest. That's your cure to hide, princess. What? What do I need to take part in this? You don't want to play. But you, we used to play hide and seek all the time. Back when we were seven years old, and now we're, now I'm a 22 year old. Playing hide and seek. Kinda weird. I'm, I'm very certain I have never played a game like this with anyone before. Is this another memory that was taken from me? Big sister, play with us! A little girl runs up to me and begins to pull me along with her. Hey! I look up at Waltz, but he only smiles at me. It seems I really don't have a choice. Waltz turns to face a wall. He covers his eyes and begins to count. Before I can react, the little girl has let go of me and is running off. What is going on? I turn and see a boy hiding behind the barrel. You have to hide before he finishes counting. They didn't even explain the rules of this game. How was I supposed to know what to do? I look around me to find places that I might hide. Maybe behind a tree? Behind the fountain would also work. Or those crates. Which one of the places should I hide in? Crates! Ready or not, here I come. I cannot believe I am sitting on a dirt to avoid being seen. My dress is getting soiled because of a child's game. Found you. Oh. My heart begins to race as I turn to look at him, but I realize that Waltz has found one of the children. Oh, it wasn't me. Wait, why am I worried about being found out? Got you. Every so often I hear Waltz proclaim that he's found someone, but he still hasn't found me. Will I get something if I win this game? Like a coupon? You still haven't found Big Sister yet! You're right. Why can't she be hiding? This is quickly becoming boring. Found you! I jump when I hear Waltz's voice behind me. He looks down at me in triumph. You won, princess! I won? Looks like you're an expert at this game. I am not. You just didn't look hard enough. That doesn't change the fact that you still won the game. You should be happy. Good job, princess. Waltz pats me on the back and smiles once again before he turns his attention back to the children. He's right. This place feels strangely nice. Why? Oh, man.
Right, everyone, that's it. The, pil the children begin to whine, clearly disappointed. We only played one round. Now, don't be like that. I promise to play another game with everyone soon. Now run along. I'm sure your parents are looking for you all. One of the children, a little girl, tugs on my sleeve. Thank you for playing with us, big sister. Please come again. She smiles up at me before skipping away to join the rest of the children. All the children head off together back toward the residential area of the town. They like you. How do you know that? Didn't you see how happy they were when they when you joined them? Children are so easy to please. That's why I envy them. Ooh. Adults aren't like children. They worry too much and don't appreciate the small joys in life. As we grow up, we forget how to be happy. Forget about how to be happy? Forget how to be happy? What's well, maybe you're right about that? When I was younger, my dolls brought me so much joy, but now... Anyway, since you won, you deserve a treat. A treat? I like it. It bounce. I sit on a wooden bench waiting for Waltz to return. He said it would be easier for him to go alone because he wanted to surprise me. I didn't protest. I've been on my feet all day. I never thought I'd be running around playing with children. I wonder what this treat is going to be. Every time we come to the plaza, it is always packed with people. Most of the popular shops are clustered in this area. I observe the town quietly before I lay... My eyes land on the statue of the king. He looks noble, riding a rearing stallion. The, start, the sight makes my heart twist uncomfortably. I am pulled out of my thoughts when a child trips and falls in front of me. He begins to cry. Should I do something? But before I can react, a man and a woman are there pulling the child up. The man takes the child in his arm and the woman rubs his back. There, there, my love. Mom and, Mo Mom and Papa are here now. I watch as they slowly walk away, the mother is still crooning to her child. Mother would always get angry at me if I was about to cry. I wonder what it's like to be comforted like that. Sorry to keep you waiting. Are you okay? I keep the family in sight for as long as I can before turning to Waltz. I'm fine. Here. What's this? A candy apple. A long time ago, I promised that I would bring you one, but I wasn't able to keep that promise. That's why I'm fulfilling it now. I... I don't remember such a promise. I twirl the candy, inspecting its glazed and shiny appearance. I didn't know you could make an apple look like this. I promise there's no poison apples here. These ones are just sweet. I sniff at the candy. Sweet. I take a small bite. Ooh. Wow, I've become so immersed in my taste test that I do not even hear Waltz. The candied apples taste like nothing I have tried before. This is good. I take another bigger bite. Is that a smile I see, princess? What? I wasn't smiling at all. Was I? When I get some extra money from my shows, I'll make sure to treat you again. I have lots of favorites to show you. There are more desserts like this? Of course. I'll make sure you try them all. Walt stands then moves over to a trash bin so that he can dispose of his finished apple. It's getting late. Let's head back to the Martian. 